Let's look closely at an example involving complementary goods and cross-price elasticity so we can see with more clarity how this whole thing unfolds and how they're related. All right, let's start with the prompt. The price of peanut butter increases from $3 to $5. Let's draw that on the graph. So we have price one is $3, and that's going to go up to price two of $5. And we know that the, well, for that reason, the uh, quantity sold is going to decrease. Okay, and the quantity sold of jelly went from 1,000 down to 900 units. So when the price of peanut butter went up, less peanut butter was sold. And we also saw that at the same time, less jelly was sold. So we have Q1 of 1,000 down to Q2 of 900. So as we see, they went in the same direction, right? The quantities went in the same direction. That means these are complementary goods. So we know that that's the answer that we should see when we do the, uh, the actual elasticity formula. Let's take a look at that formula. Again, just a quick review. We're going to be looking at the percentage change in good A divided by the percentage change in the price of good B. So where do we have our prices and quantities for? So the percent change in the uh, quantity is going to be from that 1,000, say 100, is it actually a negative 100 change divided by 950. And by the way, your answer for that is going to be 0 0.105. And that's going to be divided by a change in price. We went from 3 to 5, so we have a change of 2 uh, divided by a midpoint of 4. That's going to be 0.5. If you do the math on this, we're going to get an income elasticity of around, I'm sorry, a cross price elasticity of around 0.21. And that answer, because this number is negative, Make sure the decimal is there. And this number is going to be negative. So our answer is negative 0.21, approximately. Um, so that's going to be our, our cross-price elasticity in this case. So what does that 0.21 mean? Well, the first thing is that whenever this number comes up negative, if it's a negative number, then that means the two goods are complementary. Why? Because the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity of a good is inverse, right? So if the price of some good goes up, and then the quantity of that good sold typically goes down. But we know with complementary goods, the quantities move together, right? So in this case, because the quantity of peanut butter went down, the quantity of jelly went down. They are, or I should say, because we saw those two things together, we know that those are complementary goods. So this is, we'll call A, but we also have, in the background, the quantity down of good B as well. So they're complementary goods. So note that the inverse relationship between the price of one good and the quantity of another good means that they are complementary. The next thing that we look at is really just the size of the relationship. And the answer in this case is 0.21. And that's not too big of a relationship, to be honest. It's, it's there, but it's, uh, you know, we, we definitely see some relationship, but not too much. So this is basically you know, the, uh, the whole premise of using cross-price elasticity. You want to first determine whether or not it's a positive or negative number. That tells you, again, negative numbers are um, complements. Therefore, positive numbers must be substitutes, which we'll see in the next video. Um, but then you also look at the size of the change to determine if the relationship is very large or not.